I more. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story.
get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. In the headlines, gunmen released three abducted Yaori schoolgirls. Police arrest 20 suspects, rescue 33 others as IGP deploys police intervention team in Plateau after massive killing. Nine killed as bandits attack Sokoto villages. On the foreign scene, Zambia opposition candidate Hakainde Hichilema declared winner. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Dashen Husseina Usman. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. Now the news in detail. Three students of Federal Government College Bruni Yaori abducted two months ago by bandits have been released. The freed students were released Sunday evening alongside one of their teachers and an expatriate Daily Trust exclusively gathered. The hostages were released through the intervention of negotiators working with intelligence services. The victims are being transported to Mina, the Niger state capital, from Kotongoro, a village in Mariga local government area of the state. Inspector General of Police Usman al Alibaba says 33 victims of Saturday's attack on travelers through Rukoba community in just north local government area of Plateau State have been rescued and 20 suspects arrested. Force Public Relations Officer Frank Mba said this in a statement in Abuja. He said the police are working with the military, other security forces and state government to ensure perpetrators are brought to book. Mba said... The IG had ordered the immediate deployment of police intervention team to play two for on-the-spot assessment and to enhance coordinated response to protect the community and boost public confidence in the affected areas. He said the team would be led by Mr. Sanusi Lemu, Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of finance and administration. He further stated that the team is deployed to protect the communities, prevent further attacks and bring the perpetrators to justice. Similarly, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State has imposed a 24-hour curfew on just north local government area following Saturday's attack on commuters. A total of 23 persons were reportedly killed and 23 injured. Lalong, in a statement by his Director of Press and Public Affairs, Dr. Makut Macham, said the action was to forestall further security threat in the area. He urged Plateau people to comply with the directive to allow Security agencies maintain law and order and deal with those bent on causing chaos. Lalong stressed that the 24-hour curfew in Joss North would be operational until further notice. Bandits have killed nine people and abducted six others in an attack on some villages in Goronyo local government area of Sokwecho State. It is reported that the affected villages are Bejingo, Ntudu, and Tulutu, all in Virgin Ward. The bandits were said to have carted away herds of cattle belonging to villagers during the attack. According to the report, those killed by the bandits are eight men and one woman. 
The corpses of the deceased have been buried according to Islamic rites. Federal government has announced that 22 family members of slain Islamic State of Iraq and ISIS fighters have been repatriated to Abuja. According to a statement by Abdurrahman Balogun, spokesman of the Nigeria in Diaspora Commission, they were among 101 stranded Nigerians repatriated from Libya. The statement said they were received by officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, NIDCOM, Nigeria Center for Disease Control, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, National Emergency Management Agency, Department of State Services, Nigerian Immigration Service, and Port Health. Rescue operation in, is ongoing after an Ebony mining pit accident on Saturday. No person has been rescued two days after a bus plunged into an abandoned mining pit at a Igba local community in a Bakaliki local government area of the state. Local drivers, I beg your pardon, local divers with a crane managed to lift out the vehicle from the pits. Police say no one has been rescued at the moment. Poor visibility prevented the rescue operation on Saturday when the incident happened. Abe Thakur, Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria, says India is working closely with Nigeria to tackle insecurity by fighting terrorism and radicalization in the country. Thakur disclosed this on Sunday while answering questions on the sidelines of the commemoration of the 75th independence anniversary of India in the High Commission Abuja. He said India would continue to support Nigeria's security and defense agencies in the efforts to tackle banditry and other related crimes. Elvis Panasilva, president of Indian Cultural Association in Abuja, lauded the cultural relationship between India and Nigeria. There is a number of uh, counterterrorism initiatives, uh, both uh, in terms of security exchanges and capacity building. Uh, in fact, CICT, as I call it, uh, counterinsurgency and counterterrorism is a key area of training for uh, Nigerian military. We are also jointly developing um, uh, uh, an IED detector, which will work at a standoff range of 50 meters. Uh, there is a there is just one example of uh, joint research uh, to counter terrorism through through uh, joint defense research. Uh, both uh, uh, sharing uh, cyber terrorism. Uh, we have had uh, some very important visits of uh, Nigerian defense and security uh, establishment to India over the last two years. Uh, all heads of agencies, all heads of uh, security establishments have met each other. Uh, we are working together on, uh, um, you know, on putting out a moderate narrative uh, uh, and, and eschewing radicalism in all uh, all our discourse and this is where india and nigeria have really stood by each other both in un as well as in bilateral capacity building today lot of nigerian family members have come contributed to the celebration our indian independence day celebration there lot of people have come, come contributed over there we are very happy and very thank thankful to them we leave nigeria as our second home and beginning to now this will become our first home as well Nigeria business is very going uh, going on very smoothly. They are supporting Nigerian government is supporting very nicely to Indian organization. We are living uh, uh, without any restricted doing business. There is no problem for the business in Nigeria. Speakers at the just concluded Emir Muhammad Sanusi colloquium in Kaduna believe that the 14th Emir of Kano has paid his dues for Nigeria by speaking truth to power. The colloquium is held to mark the 60th birthday anniversary of the Emir. When you are in a society that is so abnormal, you cannot afford to be a conformist. Because if you all conform, the country will not change. You're still watching Trust TV News Update. Coming up after the break, Nigerian Meteorological Agency predicts three days of thunderstorm and rains across the country. We'll be right back. 
get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakubu Isa, and I'm not a video DJ. And you know Musa. Stephen Omoyi. I want to have a say, but you can come and meet me. I'm going to come and come and see you. Looking for private jobs. Sometimes you get employed, and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress. Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust TV. Here's a look at our top stories. We told you that three students of Federal Government College, Bernie Yaori, abducted two months ago by bandits, have been released. And Inspector General of Police, Usman al Alubaba, said 33 victims of Saturday's attack on travelers through Rukuba community in just north local government area of Plateau State have been rescued and 20 suspects arrested. Still in the news, hundreds of residents have been forced to relocate from communities across Adamawa and Jigawa states following the destruction of various properties by flood. It is reported that the situation in Adamawa was confirmed by Mohamed Suleiman, Executive Secretary of Adamawa State Emergency Management Agency. According to Adsema, 66 houses and 150 farmlands were ravaged by flood in Lababiri and Bakta communities in Shelang local government area of Adamawa state. Suleiman explained that the disaster occurred during the week following heavy rainfall which lasted for two days. According to Suleiman, residents of the affected areas are currently taking refuge in neighboring communities while the number of casualties have not yet been confirmed. He added that officials of Adsema have been deployed to the affected communities. Nigerian Meteorological Agency has predicted three days of thunderstorms and rains across the country. This prediction was contained in NIMET's weather outlook released in Abuja. Thunderstorms were predicted over parts of Taraba, Kebi, Zamfara, Bauchi, Kano, Yobe and Kaduna states in the morning hours on Sunday. According to NIMET, Thunderstorms are expected over parts of Borno, Yobe, Jigawa, Bauchi, Zamfara, Taraba, Adama, Sokoto, Kano, Katsuna, and Kaduna states as the day progresses. Naimet further envisaged rains over parts of Edo, Imo, Oyo, Ondo, Abia, Anambra, Enugu, Rivers, Cross Rivers, Bayelsa, Lagos, and Akwai Bomb states later in the day. The agency predicted cloudy skies over the northern region in the morning hours on Tuesday, with chances of thunderstorms over parts of Borno, Zamfara, Kebi, Jigawa, and Sokoto states. Independent National Electoral Commission has cautioned Nigerians to beware of fake recruitment adverts circulating on social media. In a statement issued by INEC National Commissioner Festus Okoye, the electoral body said it had previously warned of fake employment merchants and racketeers who opened fake employment websites and issued fake employment letters purporting to be acting on behalf of the commission. According to Okoye, scammers are recirculating INEX old advertisements for recruitment on social media platforms with the intention to lure and dupe unsuspecting members of the public with attractive offers of employment. In business, Securities and Exchange Commission has advised Nigerians to do due diligence on investment platforms through its portal before investing. In March, the Commission said 3 million Nigerians lost 18 billion naira to Ponzi schemes operators. 
It also said the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Nigerian economy helped proliferation of Ponzi schemes offering unrealistic returns on investment to unsuspecting investors. Speaking with journalists, Lami O. Yuguda, Director General of SEC, said investors need proper research to effectively curtail the fraud perpetuated by Ponzi schemes. He said the commissioner has a list of registered and legitimate operators on its website. SEC boss said the commission acknowledged the critical role the capital market could play in the long-term financing of infrastructure in the country. Away from Nigeria, Zambia's Electoral Commission has confirmed that last week's presidential election was won by the opposition candidate Hakainde Hichilema. Hichilema defeated his main rival, the outgoing president Edgar Lungu, by more than a million votes. Earlier, Lungu alleged that the elections were not free and fair. He said the election officials from his Patriotic Front party had been chased from polling stations, leaving votes unprotected. In response, Hichilema's United Party for National Development said the statement was the desperate final act of an outgoing administration. And in sports, Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola has challenged the club's critics to come up with evidence if they believe the Blues are breaking financial fair play rules. Thirteen months after court of arbitration for sports overturned City's two-year ban from European competition for breaching UEFA's FFP rules, questions about the club's spending are again being raised. Guardiola defended City's British record £100 million signing of England midfielder Jack Grealish. The Spanish manager insists the deal was only possible because of £60 million worth of sales by the club over the past 12 months, including £11 million received from Borussia Dortmund following Jadon Sanchez's move to Manchester United. That wraps up the news update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Dashan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Nigerian story. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakub Isa, and I'm going to be the Jiji. And you know, Musa. It's time to come on. I want to have a say, okay, then some of them see. I'm going to come on today. I'm looking for private jobs. Sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress.